Well, good morning from uh, sunny Salvador in Brazil. Uh, the weather's uh, gone from being very grey and uh, very wet to now quite sunny. It was raining this morning when uh, just as I awoke. I have my own website called merfabulous.com and I, I like to blog and I did a blog post a few years ago about carbon and the carbon cycle and it was actually my most popular blog that I'd ever done. I had loads and loads of really good, nice, positive comments on it. I normally like to include videos in my blogs as well as uh, as text, you know. Well, I thought I'd maybe have a chat about this. I call it the uh, greenhouse effect. Being a sailor, you know, I obviously am quite aware of the the oceans and the interaction between the, the sea and the sky. And you see this constantly. Uh, it's like uh, water's coming off the ocean, especially when it's warm, wherever I am. And it's obviously going up in forming cloud and then from cloud into precipitation. Now, the thing is with uh, the greenhouse effect, that's quite a natural thing that's been going on for, for thousands of years. And we've got these greenhouse gases and the one that's most people are aware of is carbon dioxide or CO2, but there are other greenhouse gases as well. Another one being methane. But one of the biggest ones is actually water vapor. It's the way they're actually molecular, molecularly structured. Uh, you know, H2O and uh, carbon dioxide, two of, one of carbon, two of uh, oxygen. And the reason why they're called uh, a greenhouse gas is um, what they do is they trap infrared radiation. And that's what's kept the planet at an average of 15 degrees pre-industrial time. And that's what's obviously been able to uh, generate life. Obviously without the oceans and, and uh, also liquid water is quite a unique molecular structure. It's not you know people think it's quite normal it's not it's very very rare certainly within the uh the cosmos and i would say without water we wouldn't have life and we wouldn't have an atmosphere now the problem with the carbon cycle which there isn't a problem is a natural carbon cycle a biological one and there's a geological one now the biological one we're actually involved in that because we've got 18 percent of carbon in ourselves and tissues and bone and muscle. But the other thing is, um, <clears throat> when we breathe in air, which is mainly uh, nitrogen, 79% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. Um, when we breathe out, we, we breathe out about four to five percent carbon dioxide. So every hour we at rest, we would uh, breathe out a liter of carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. Now, we have actually got a problem, a major, major problem. Uh, at the moment, I, I follow carbon uh, levels in the atmosphere religiously every month. And uh, at the moment, it's 425 parts per million. Pre-industrial, which is about 300 years ago, it was just under 300 parts per million. Now, if we get, even when we get up to 600 parts per million, that's going to give us a 3% rise in temperature which could be and will be catastrophic for humanity so we're two-thirds of the way to that already why is there a problem since the industrial age well what we've done we've actually over the years going back in time mined coal which is a carbon which is our dead organisms really that over, the, over millions and millions of years have been compressed to form coal. And then we've also, uh, uh, from coal as oil and, and get natural gas, 
And the problem with is that, that this is not the natural carbon cycle. We've been digging this up as a very cheap form of fuel to produce our modern civilization that we have today. But the problem is, uh, take for instance an internal combustion engine of a car, it's very inefficient. From the burning of fuel to motion, it's only 50%. That's even good, 50% efficient. So a lot of times, engines are only 25% efficient. So most of that has been combusted back into the atmosphere and that has carbon dioxide. And that is the problem we've got. We're, we're emitting gigatons of carbon dioxide year in, year out. And the problem with CO2, not like methane, is it stays in the atmosphere for a long time. And don't forget, we keep increasing it year on, year on. And that's why uh, it's not linear, by the way. Uh, it's not a linear scale. It's a log, what they call a logarithmic scale. Uh, <clears throat> so for every one degree, we increase the temperature of the planet. That's a 7% increase in water vapor. And water vapor is a major greenhouse gas. Um, also, the planet, it's a wonderful system we have with the oceans. It's, it's like a, a heat exchanger or a thermostat to keep maintaining the temperature throughout the planet. When I left the Cape, Cape Verde Islands um, in June, not long afterwards in August, they formed a, a hurricane called Hurricane Aaron. Now I watched that track and across fortune didn't hit any land. It went up the eastern uh, seaboard and it followed the uh, Gulf Stream across and it came an extra tropical storm by the time it got to the UK. Now that hurricane was absolutely massive. It was diameter 800 nautical miles wide, huge. And the problem being is as the temperature keeps increasing the, the planet nature has to be able to reduce temperatures and normally that starts from a, from the equator above the equator cyclonic systems or hurricanes or typhoons they obviously build up based on the temperature of the water and don't forget carbon goes into the water and into the atmosphere and obviously as the temperatures increase we have more water vapor more energy in the atmosphere and that means we're going to get bigger and bigger storms of more maybe not maybe more intense but in size the huge size of them because all, all that's happening is it's it's transporting the warm water or the warm atmosphere into a cyclonic system and it's bringing that up to the to the uh, colder regions of the planet. So that's quite a natural thing. Now, one of the reasons why I'm doing this uh, sailing odyssey now is because I realize in the not too distant future, climatic conditions and the oceans are going to have uh, bigger and bigger storms and, and bigger and bigger low, low pressure systems, which is gonna make it very difficult for small boat sailors. And I would even say, for major shipping, that could be a problem as well. At a 3% rise, we're talking about catastrophic situation with uh, uh, food growth, uh, with migration. But people are not gonna be able to live in those temperatures. So for me, this is the reason why I'm doing this uh, sailing odyssey now, because I, I, I know I understand that, you know, I'm very into, uh, I have to be, very very um aware of what's going on when i'm sailing uh because i know it's it's a there's quite a high element of risk in sailing oceans in small boats and um this is why i'm doing it now because i realize if i don't do it now in a not too distant future people are not going to be able to cross oceans in small boats definitely not in any times where they've got massive cyclonic conditions so i'm sorry to be a little bit depressing about this but that was the reason why i did this uh, little chat today is because of my web uh, post 
on my blog created so much interest I thought maybe I'd just have a little chat about it today.